I don't hear anything. Fourteen points, and what you find is that they mean something new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these fourteen points every day. experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. Oh, oh comrades. Uh... Had a little technical difficulties coming into the uh, meeting today. There was a few uh, few hiccups, but we want to welcome everybody into the, the southern region uh, of the African People's Social Party. Uh, we will be streaming on uh, live on Facebook, and we have uh, some new forces here for the first time uh, live in Zenzele. So, you know, uh, we want to again welcome you to the, the political education of the African People's Socialist Party. And, uh, you know, we're going to get into it. We got uh, big things happening this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Uh, tomorrow is the first day of the African People's Socialist Party, uh, third plenary of the uh, Seventh Congress. And it's 50 years of struggle, 50 years of relentless struggle. And it's so significant because uh, I have to salute my, my leadership first, Chairman O'Malley and Sotelo, uh, and the significance of uh, the theory of African internationalism and the fact that for the first time, you know, we have had, uh, you know, a, a, a revolutionary organization that had had 50 years of struggle uninterrupted. You know, most of revolutionary organizations have a, a very short lifespan under colonialism. Uh, well, you had, I think the Panthers was only around like three to five years, you know, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, so many organizations that didn't have a lifespan because they attacked uh, uh, and then defeated the Black Power Revolution of the 60s. And, and um, you know, but Chairman O'Malley, when people had to go underground or exiled or locked up in prison, Chairman O'Malley used to tell the African People's Social Party, you know, stayed above ground and, and carried the revolution. So this is significant. So tomorrow will be the first day of the African People's Social Party, third uh, plenary of the of the seventh Congress. So if you're interested in revolution and getting free, uh, not not you know not play freedom, but real freedom, you know, uh, you should be there tomorrow, uh, and you can register if you have not registered. APSP, uh, Uhuru. Um, APSP uh, plenary, uh, dot org, And if you want to be a member, you can go to APSPOHU.org. But comrades, without further ado, we're going to jump into this. This is the second week that we, instead of doing a 14-point platform, which we will get back to in the upcoming weeks, but we thought it would be significant to deal with the concepts of, of social systems. And we'll talk about why, you know, but first we want to give a brief introduction to everybody just, you know, for people that's coming on for the first time and, and also, you know, just for people to know uh, who's who. So uh, again, my name is Kobina Bantushango and uh, I am the Southern Regional Representative of the African People's Social Party. And we, we can start with some of the comrades that's in here. If y'all can just briefly introduce yourself. Uh, William Black, Prince of Michal, um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Mr. Dalton Oates. 
Malika. My name is Malika. Nice to meet everyone. Uhuru. Uhuru is Kundai. Um, I'm the assistant manager here at Zinslake Consignment. <clears throat> excuse me, which is one of over 50 economic institutions um, uh, led by the Uhuru Movement and African People's Socialist Party. So if everybody on today, even if you're not in the shop, and for those of you that are in the shop, if you have Facebook, if y'all could check in to Zinslake Consignment along with sharing the live so people know that they can come here to get some uh, revolutionary studies. I'm Sayero of the African People's Socialist Party in the Midwest region. Up in Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh -huh. My name is Mercer Jabul. I'm in New York. I'm a member of the AAPRP, um, but I also enjoy participating in the study group here as well to continue my learning and my growth as a Pan Africanist. I'm Nyendu Nyangosha. In Fort Myers, Florida, I am the uh, photo editor, brain spear, and a member of the African People Socialist Party. Uhuru, I'm Sai Kamba. I am a member of the African People's Socialist Party. I'm also the uh, Director of Membership and Recruitment for the African National Women's Organization. So if you're an African woman and you're um, looking to get involved in this political life, please hit me up. And I'm glad to be here and sit and glad to see everyone's wonderful faces on this call. Uhuru. Yes, I'm Queen Mother Kashiva. I am a member of the I'm a member of the New Black Panther Party. Uh, I'm a minister. I'm a member of the Minister of Health, and I'm a member of the Sisters of Underground. And I'm glad to be here in your class. Uhuru. Uhuru, I'm Riverside. I live in Houston. I unite with African internationalism. This is Micah. Say, Uhuru, Micah. <laughs> Uhuru, I'm in DC from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm a member of Impedum, uh, currently serving as the secretary for uh, Impedum Boston. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade. Uhuru. Did, did we miss anybody? Uhuru, I'm coming right in the go. I'm from I'm Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I live in Florida. Uhuru. Uhuru. We can't get the we can't get the infamous indigo. <laughs> I'm from the Hill District, by the way. I heard Pittsburgh over here. Yeah. I know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all sound like y'all know something about that. <laughs> yeah, that's the hometown, born and black, bleed black. Right. That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. Welcome to the South. <laughs> Yeah, so I appreciate everybody being on uh, and, and welcome. I was trying to get everybody positioned where we can see everybody, but um, I think I need a bigger, a bigger laptop. But uh, we're gonna, uh, we gonna work with it. So like I say, the last couple of weeks, we've been dealing with uh, social system. And the reason that we thought it was significant to deal with social system, because when we go through the 14 point platform, we learn so much but we also recognize that you know some people just coming into political life, some people just recognizing, uh, just understanding what uh, these terms in, and some people may not know what the terms are. And when we talk about capitalism, colonialism, socialism, and these type of uh, terms, and 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 how these things, if you have a misunderstanding of them, or if you have the definition that that, that the colonizer has given us, then you have a uh, you uh, you know, you come to the wrong conclusion, you know what I'm saying? And, and you might even start thinking that we the problem to our own contradiction, you know, but uh, Chairman O'Malley used to tell in African internationalism, you know, helps us to understand, you know, what these what these terms and what these what a social system is. And, and you begin to understand, you know, uh, that a social system has rules and, 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 and a structure that it, it, it is not going to, it's not going to betray, just like a car is not going to be an airplane. No matter what you do, uh, even if you drove that car off the Grand Canyon, it, it probably not it's not going to fly. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and and even if you put a pilot in that car, the car is still not going to fly. And that's what we have to understand when we talk about social systems. You know, when you're fighting for freedom and quote unquote democracy, 
you know, uh, some social systems cannot uh, provide that to you uh, for you, even in its best, even when it's when it's functioning like it's supposed to. And so that's why we study in these, these terms and, and to help people understand, you know, uh, what the contradictions are, because they don't gave us some misdefinitions of stuff. So, um, you know, without, you know, that's just a brief overview. I wanted to review some of the terms that we talked about last week. And, and uh, if y'all can, you know, come on camera so we can, everybody can be like we in the same room, you know what I'm saying? Even though we're not, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, in, the, in, in dealing with this pandemic, it, um, you know, this is the closest thing we got to being in the same space, you know what I'm saying? But uh, so we're gonna look at we're gonna look at some of these um, some of these terms and and um, do anybody remember last week what we went over? Uh, we went over capitalism and it wasn't communism. Socialism. Socialism. Right on. Right on. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's an astute student right there. <laughs> right on. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and um and then we're gonna get into some, we're gonna get into some of these terms and we'll have a brief discussion and then we're gonna get into, you know, uh a term that we didn't look at. There's a couple of terms that we didn't look at uh last week. And um so we're gonna we're gonna work with that. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So last week we dealt with, um, like you said, we dealt with capitalism and colonialism, and um, just a real brief. <laughs> Discussion. Can somebody read those two definitions? Uhuru. Capitalism. The social system characterized by socialized production and private ownership of the means of production and explorative, uh, exploitative relationship between bosses and workers. It came into existence as a parasitic worldwide white power system through what Marx referred to as primitive accumulation, the theft of human and material resources from Africa, Asia, what is now known as the Americas. It is a system that was born parasitic and requires the ongoing parasitic theft of foreign labor and resources for its continued existence. Like a parasite that sucks on the blood of its host to survive, capitalism requires the ability to suck the blood of the colonies. If the colonized workers stop the blood sucking, capitalism dies. However, the colonized workers do not stop the blood sucking, they die. APSPUhuru.org, colonialism, the foreign domination of a nation of people at the social, political, and economic expense of the dominated nation of people or people. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yeah, I appreciate that, comrade. And I want to, you know, just look at uh, like something that the chairman just, um, you know, one of the new developments in, in in the theory and struggling with this is that colonialism become is the mode of production for capitalism. Like we talked about last week, you know, you have uh, situations where, you know, we can we can talk about going into Firestone and, and deciding on if I want good year. Uh, if I want Michelin, if I want five stone tires, but we don't talk about, you know, that they force African children to uh, uh, get the rubber from the rubber trees in Liberia. You know what I'm saying? And we don't see that process. And but that's where the resources for uh, the Americas, you know, come from, from capitalism, capitalism come from. So colonialism is the mode of production for. Um, for capitalism. And uh, we also discussed something that we didn't discuss last week was neocolonialism, which is the imperialist foreign domination of a, of a people indirectly through control of the economy and social system using members 
of the dominated people as an administrators, as administrators, neocolonialism is white power and black faith. Can anybody say, just give me one person that may be white power and black faith? Oh, wow. That would be that would be uh, Justice uh, um, um, Clarence Thomas. <laughs> that, that's one. That's one. Obama. Kamala. Obama. Obama. Obama is definitely one. Kamala Harris. <laughs> right. The list. The list, the list right. goes on, right? Yeah. Yes. And Al and, Sharpen. <laughs> right. Al, right on. Right on. And. And this is what we didn't discuss last week. And I'm, I'm glad y'all, y'all, as, as, as Comrade Life would say, smart Africans, you know what I'm saying? Cause, cause y'all came right off the back naming people. And, uh, and some people just laugh and say, there's so many of them, <laughs> that's, that's real talk. So, but we can't be confused by them putting uh, somebody that looked like us in front of us and carrying out their agenda. Uh, but that's how they confuse a lot of people, but communism is a social system characterized by socialized uh, production, socialized ownership, the absence of class contradictions, and uh, as a result, the ab absence of a state apparatus. And just real quick, before we start getting into that, I wanna, I wanna look at uh, the definition of what the state is. You know, when we say the state apparatus, you know, we wanna, wanna clear that up <clears throat> and make sure we understand what the state is. And the state is an apparatus of repression that emerges only in societies split into classes and whose purpose of existence is to protect the existing social system through use, through use of co uh, coercion, the army, the police, the courts, the prisons, all are all a part of the state apparatus. So that's the definition of, a, of the state and uh, so let, let's dive into this. You know, um, what do y'all think about uh, whether the social systems, <clears throat> what do we think about the different social systems and uh, what that means for our liberation struggle and even just, you know, the average person, day-to-day -day African person <clears throat> trying to survive or, or, or believing that this is a democracy and, uh, and what do y'all think about the differences of what you may have heard of Excuse me. In terms of uh, communism, Uhuru, Uhuru. <laughs> Prime example of why we know it does not work. As they pass legislation time and time again to have the right to vote, then they retract it and they suppress the vote. Uh, and then you find that when you do vote, you never get what was promised anyway, because it was just an empty promise, a lie. That is the capitalist colonial imperialist system that we live in. As opposed to communism and socialism, should I say that, where everybody has equal share. Uh, prime example, Cuba, I was listening in that everybody basically owns their own home. They're not overtaxed. They're not uh, uh, put upon. Cuba has survived because everybody works together. Cuba has survived simply because everybody shares. Uh, no one goes, if I'm starving, you're starving. Uh, if I'm eating, you're eating. This is what socialism and communism actually means. Uh, and it is not wicked as uh, democracy, something described, a game, a scheme uh, that was put upon us to believe that uh, if we want freedom, then we would fight for democracy. If we want freedom, we would serve in their militaries. We would serve on their forces of of being neo-colonizers ourselves and, and hurting our own, damaging our own, doing uh, brutal things to our own. And then sometimes uh, for some not even having to regret. And then of course, for a lot having at the end of the day a soul and really regretting uh, that they paid such a cost of hurting their own people. Yeah, right on. And, and let's talk about and uh, I appreciate that, Comrade Sayadaw. And if you got any questions about anything that we just uh, talked about, that I know we kind of went through some of the review uh, kind of fast, we just read it one time, but if you want to pull it up or if you got any questions, um, like I say, I think the significance of understanding social system 
because it's, it's, it's impossible to fight against something that you don't understand, you know? And oftentimes we, we, they give us these definitions without really uh, helping us understand what it means. Most people say that they fuck capitalism, but they don't even know what capitalism is and don't even understand that when we talk about, you know, free markets and stuff like that, that you gotta have capital. And, and in fact, you know, uh, how they got their capital and how they still get their capital is the fact that they can uh, colonize everybody and steal your resources and then call you a thief and, and, and say that you, you know, you, you, not, you don't have money because you, you're not educated or you're not frugal or something like that or civilized. But we know that that's not true. So uh, go ahead, Saeed. I see you got your hands up. Ooh, comrade. Uhuru, I, I, when I came to the party, I mean, I would hear like, before I came to the party, I would hear different, like, you know, um, terms like colonialism, capitalism, the state, those things that were going over now. And I appreciate this and I unite with everyone has said already. Um, but I just want to also like help us all to appreciate that the fight is not in racism. And that's where it's like an empty fight that there's not an end result to that. And by us explaining these definitions and taking the time out to understand where we are, you know, how it's, it's, it's about economics, it's about money, and it's about labor. And so that, that's where the fight is. And that's where the, the struggle is, should I say. And so by us understanding our place in, in this society that, you know, that this world, not just United States, but the pretty much the European um, Europeans have definitely have taken over the world through imperialism and colonialism because they want to fuel their economy. And they do it at the expense of, of African labor and peasant labor. And they, they and that's where we put our energy in. And they want us to believe that they, because they you know voted in Obama, they want us to believe that because they you know, we have a woman vice president. They want us to believe that these are um, achievements for us, that they're defining what achievement means for us. But when we understand that no matter how many people we get into office, there are office that's in the system that's created to still and siphon our labor and our lives and the lives of our children. And, and that's why we concentrate on reparations because it's about economics and it's about green. I was just watching... Uh, 42 the other day again and I was watching um the movie and that's about uh, uh Jackie Robinson how you know um they were um integrating the um the baseball league and one of the things that he asked was like why do you want me on here and he didn't say because you know I think it's time for you to get a fair shake or you're a great player he said at the end of the day you know it's about money and I'm gonna bring people to the stands and and the white guy said what if the white folks don't come to the game? He said, but black people, they get their money's green too. And it's all about green. And that was just a good example for me to show that it's about the economy and that they will try to give us little trinkets of elevation or different titles to satisfy their economy, to satisfy their, their social system. But until we educate African people around how this is impacting our lives and will continue to impact our lives. We'll continue being this, this, this rat race, like a hamster trying to figure out and say, no, just give me some rights and we'll be okay. But it's not that. So I just wanted to share that. Uh -huh. Oh, right on. Right. Did I have anything? Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Right on. So I, 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 yeah, that was right on. Go ahead. Come right Riverside. Um, on the note of like you was asking, what is the importance of like understanding social systems and stuff? And I feel like it's important to like understand what colonialism is. Like, cause if you understand what colonialism is, then you understand that like it penetrates every facet of life. Like it's not just some abstract thing that happened a long time ago and that we don't longer have to deal with. Like we deal with it every day. And y'all know I work at a preschool or whatever. And you know, it's supposed to be like Black History Month, but that's not what we talk about. We talk about presidents. We talk about Valentine's Day because it's, it penetrates everything. You know what I'm saying? The commercials, the stuff your kids learn. And 
like our comrade just said, you know what I'm saying? It is important for us to educate. Like, we got to educate our own. We can't just send our kids to school, you know what I'm saying, and feel like they're going to get what they need because they're not. They're going to get what the state needs. They, the state is giving them what they want them to have. And that's not the end all be all, you know what I'm saying? If you leave it up to the educational system, we won't know what we could do and what we're capable of, you know what I'm saying? And like when kids be doing bad in school, they try to put that on the kids or even try to put that on the parents. But like, y'all not teaching them who they are. And that's very intentional, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want them to be no good. It's easy for you to like incriminate them when you put them in a position to feel like where their history started was in slavery and lucky. Oh. You, yeah. you froze the last the last seven rows you said you froze. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying, to teach them their history in a way that suggests that, like, it started with slavery and, and look at you, now you get to go to school, white people, and you get to go to school, period, and it's HBCUs, like, that's the end all, be all, and we arrive, like, that that don't motivate nobody, you know what I'm saying, and it's easy for you to incriminate them, but you set the stage, like, you put the pieces of the dominoes in order and knock them down, so, uh -huh. Oh, right on, right on. You know, that's one thing that I always appreciate about like the hood is like, uh, it's like, I might not know. I remember as a kid, like growing up in the projects, you thinking like, I might not know shit you just said, but what I do know is the shit that it shit wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And you understand it. You know, you read people in a certain type of way, you know what I'm saying? And you, and you understand it. And that's how kids are. Kids may not understand everything you're talking about, but they get, that, that you just attack them, you know what I'm saying? And that's what, you know, that's why like the system, like like she was just saying, it creates a narrative, like if uh, uh, Cyan Riverside was saying, it, it has power over the narrative. And and they because they have power over the narrative, they create this, this uh, narrative that you supposed to be struggling to be equal to them. You know what I'm saying? That you supposed to be, that you supposed to struggle, uh, that they can kill you they can kill a, a, a 12 year old kid on a playground with a play gun playing and say that he had fought for being killed. You know what I'm saying? And, and we see this over and over again because they paint the narrative that we the criminal. But in reality, the biggest criminal that exists is the government, is, 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 the, uh, is the politician, is the US, is the police. Is the pharmaceuticals, right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we understand that and we have to be able to define it. Sometimes we, we know it, but we haven't heard that narrative. And that's why African internationalism is so important because it turns the world right side up and help people to understand, you know, what the hell is happening, you know, because they make you feel at fault for, for, for being poor, you know, but the only reason any black person anywhere on earth is poor is because they still in all our shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and then they'll turn around and say, you lazy and shiftless, even though you done did 400 years of free labor, you know, for uh, for for free. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So anybody else? I just wanted to comment on what you said real quick. And if we was late and we was still in, we learned that from y'all. Cause I know before you came over here and bothered us, moved us around, we was minding our own business. Like we wasn't, none of this was even a question. So we learned from the best, if that was the case. Now I, I wouldn't say this too much, but like, uh, <laughs> That's like that's like you can I can't steal my own shit back. You know what I'm saying? That that that's 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 me. That's just me righting the wrong. And and somebody uh one time somebody uh, broke in my house and stole a TV. And I know who did it, so I broke in their house and stole it back. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't that wasn't me stealing my TV. That was my TV. You know what I mean? And so I knew where my TV was at, and I went and got my TV. And that's what we have to do. We can't allow them. You know, if you break in my house and 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 you robbing me, it's not violent for me to defend myself and my family. It's not violent for me to stop this type of thing from happening. And and that's why we have to understand what colonialism, because they'll they'll lull you into a a, a a situation where you fighting for equal rights or where you fighting uh, to vote and participate in a system that the only way that it progresses is at your expense. And we have to we have to uh, we have to help under, help people understand. That you're right for being pissed off. You right for uh understanding that it is the system that is at fault for, for the conditions that we face we face with. And understanding that capitalism, you know, it it, it is not it, it it works in the best interest of the people in power. And that's why we fight for power. We fight to be in control and govern ourselves. And and that's what our struggle has to be. Anybody else?
Y'all, y'all don't like y'all ready. My how, see, how, uh, come around. You got something? I know you, uh, you, you, you was talking about, uh, uh, um, communism last time. I want to see if you had had anything to say. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> You know, I guess to, to build on something that Comrade Reversay say just mentioned also that uh, uh, when, you talk, when you look at the social systems, it's unfortunate that it's almost like those that are living within the capitalist system are, are brainwashed to think that this is what's successful. This is what's right. Like, look over here, look, look how we're living. Look at these other social systems, look how they're living. Um, and, you know, I appreciate uh, uh, my exposure to African internationalism because I've I've learned that uh, uh, you know those social systems may be in the state that they are in around the world because of the existence of capitalism and colonial capitalism. So uh, you know it's 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 like like you mentioned, Cobina, Conrad. Um, they they have they have they, they control the narrative. Um, and, and it's it's something that we need to continue to educate ourselves and educate those around us. Uhuru. Oh, right on, comrade. Right on, comrade. And and I think we have to really understand the, the significance of like having they want to have a monopoly on the narrative and a monopoly on violence. So if 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 you don't go along with what they're talking about, they can kill you and then say you were the terrorist. You know, and we have to be able to you know, help people understand because it is demoralizing the way they define. If our definition of ourselves come from them, we're going to always be oppressed and, and, and always, you know, struggling to fit in today society and not even understanding that, you know, this society is against, is against us. Uh, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. I think about um, when you mentioned in regards of defining ourselves based upon their definition, uh, the prime example I think about is when Biden said, you're not black if you don't <laughs> vote for Democrats. So at that very moment, I'm like, who are you to tell me who I am? Yeah, yeah. And who are you to determine if I don't make this right choice, then when am I after that if I don't make that choice? Yeah. So I think about that. Yeah, that's right on. That's a good point. That's a good point. And what do y'all think about, like, uh, like just to piggyback off the point she just made, like, do you see having having their definition versus the definition that we just talking that we're talking about now that you can come to wrong conclusion? Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people, because it's like that's where we have to like educate and agitate and 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 sell the Bernie Spears to bring this this information out, you know. And so, you know, someone had asked me a question earlier, and I'm. A, throw this back out to the group or to you, Kabina, is um, as, you know, you know the, the party's been around for, you know, we're going into like 50 years, right? And we've mm -hmm. done a lot, you know, and um, and someone to ask like, you know, what is our end result? What are we working towards, you know, um, the struggle? How are we different from the Black Panther Party or, you know, or, or NAACP? Like, you know, where where is the party going and what is the method to helping us you know, reach our liberation. Are we buying land? Or they ask, you know, are we buying land? Are we buying, you know, are we going to a country? Like how how would you answer that question? Or whoever? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would answer that question probably in a, in, a, in, a, in, in a couple of different ways. But one is that we have to end colonialism uh, because you can't purchase land and colonialism and think you're gonna be free. You know what I'm saying? Because that and, and even even in your effort, even when you purchase land, it had to be with it with the intent to overturn the system. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't do that, if you just buy land just to have land, then you you buy land within colonialism. You know what I'm saying? Which is righteously, you know, on this on this continent is the indigenous people land. You know what I'm saying? Which should go back to them. You know what I mean? Which is problematic because how in the hell you come here. And then you draw an artificial, you just draw a line and say, I know that yesterday this was Mexico, today is New Mexico. And if you cross this line, now you are illegal alien. You know, how, how can you justify that? You know what I'm saying? You cannot 
justify that. But if you buy some land in New Mexico, does that mean that now this is New Mexico? No, nah, that means that this needs to go back to the indigenous people. It doesn't, So, I, but I want to be clear that I'm not saying don't purchase land. But what I am saying that it has to be tied to a revolutionary process that it has the intent to overturn uh, the social system that, that we're in. Because if we don't connect that, then you know we just contribute to sustaining uh, the oppression that we that we have. So our end goal is to govern ourselves. Our end goal is to be in control of our own resources, human and natural. Our end goal is that we have to have a revolution to overturn uh, colonialism in order for us to be free. You're not going to have. I, I was looking at uh, 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 something today, and they were talking about, you know. Uh, Talk, they were trying to badmouth socialism, socialism on the slide, but then they said that, but what has worked is a mixed economy. Not, I mean, this shit is sound crazy, but it's like, you know, the reality is that, you know, the only, if you break in my house and steal all my stuff, the only way for me to right that wrong is either you leave my house or, I mean, one way or the other, you leave my house. That's the only option. You know what I'm saying? Now you can walk out because we don't, you understand that you wrong me, or you know you can be carried out, but one way you got to leave, and and if you're not talking, if you're not doing that, then you just placate and you put me in a situation where no matter what I negotiate with you, I'm 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 coming out with less than what I had before I met you, and that's something that we got to help people understand because people would think that you know just have a black business or just have you know some land and you know you 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 know because if they want to run a highway through that land, you know they're gonna do it. You know what I'm saying, and 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 we got to be able to overturn colonialism and put the put the put the power back into the hands of the people. We got to govern ourselves. I hope I answered that question. I see. Uh, I know in Yindu, in, in before we, I want to see if everybody, you know, want to talk, want to say something before we go back to people that they had. If Indigo uh, and Yindu, anybody else, Queen Mother, uh, anybody else want to say anything? Go ahead, Yindu. The only thing I would like to say is that whatever we do and uh, <clears throat> whatever, you know, whatever we do, we always got to, to remember this to what end. We just don't do things just for the heck of it. Like you was talking about buying land. You buying land for a reason, not just because you just need to buy and buy land to be buying land. Whatever, I, we always got to have that in mind to what end we are doing things. You know, that's the way political education come in and that's the way it's very fast because it's to tell you to what end we're doing something. Thank you. Oh, oh. So did that help? Or did that answer the question? Yeah, I helped I helped you know, to me to appreciate it and to answer that question. And also one of the things that I um did bring out in answering that was that by us having you know us that we're that African nationalism is a theory of practice. And by us building institutions and that we have already in the party and even the regional strategy that we operate in helps to prepare us to govern when that time uh, comes and helps equip us to be able to recruit more people because it's about the unity of all African people, no matter where you are on, on this globe. So I appreciate the answer and um, thank you. Oh, right on, right on. And uh, Kundai had, had something then. We, I see, I see Sayero, I ain't forgetting about you. Oh. Uh -huh. Um, and Uhuru, uh, Mike Etty, and Derek Aisha. Uh, but um, uh, one thing that I wanted to, um, I think it was something that you might have said, but one thing that I wanted to piggyback off of was that um, around like going back to the social systems like capitalism versus communism. Um, and uh, like, you know, how we kind of talking about now, like the thing of purchasing land and whatnot. But um, is how and what I appreciate about today's study is how important one, like you saying, us like not just letting them control and have and and just going by their narrative and allowing them to control, um, yeah, by control what we experience and like defining what we experience them, uh, because they'll through their propaganda and agitation, like Sai mentioned. You know, they'll have you thinking that that capitalism is what produces life for, for everybody and for black people, you know, for everybody across the board and socialism produces laziness or something as if um, as if it's not a, a small percentage of the world sitting up somewhere being lazy while the rest of us slave to make them to allow them to be lazy and, and comfortable. 
And um, and capitalism, you know, the current social system in which we function under teaches us to be individuals and teaches us the most backwards practices of life. So we don't ever reach socialism. So we don't come to revolutionary conclusions because it's constantly, constantly reinforcing to um, to buy into the system, to be an individual, to like uh, Riverside said, to be satisfied because, you know, when they throw us a bone, like give us HBCUs or, you know, whatever. And and through, you know, African internationalism, which is the theory in which um, Chairman Omali Yeshitela has, has founded and what we work off of that guides our practice in the Uhuru movement because we understand that theory and practice, you know, go hand in hand. Um, and we put what we saying, like what we talking about to work, like it's not just a discussion on the live, like we sit in an economic institution, like Kobina has just said, because um, it's not enough just to be, uh, just to own businesses or even enough just to talk about it, but for this business to contribute to the end goal of liberation, not just because we want to be black, we just because we want black business owners, just so we can continue to build up capitalism, but because this is a way of, of when we, when it is, when when the shit hits the fan and it's time for us to get free, that we understand how to run our own businesses, that we understand how to control um, resources and how to and how to lead in a in a in a certain type of way, um, which is which is important because it can't just be about the actual you know battle of throwing the motherfucker out, throwing the person you know out your house, but but then what do you do when you back in control over your own house? How do you how do you function? And so all of this is contributing to us being able to build, to get away from capitalism and to build a socialist economy so that we can once again just coexist as human beings and be under, you know, what, what would then be communism. Um, but and, and that ties into the thing around like buying land. And because even if they don't build a highway through it and they and they never touch you and, and, and you left untouched on your land, even if that were possible, which we all know that as, as an African person, as a black person that at any given moment, you can be gunned down, like you can be gunned down in your bed, in your own, in the comfort of your own home and won't nothing happen, you know? And and then the person that gunned you down might even might not even go on trial. You know what I mean? There'll never be justice for your life as a black person um, uh, under capitalism, under as a, uh, as a colonial subject. But even if that wasn't the case, what does that mean for everybody else? You know, what does it mean for you to just be okay and safe in your own little niche somewhere on your own land? What does that mean for everybody else, for every other black person that that lives in poverty and that suffers and and, and can't see the light? What, what does that mean for everybody else? And that's not that's not socialism, that's not liberation, just because you yourself, you know, have acquired some sort of comfort within capitalism where you feel untouched. What does that mean for everybody else? And and that's the type of new human that we want to create, you know, in the process of revolution, the process of getting free is where, um, yeah, where you 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 care about humanity enough to want the person next to you to not to to not have to suffer, regardless if you know them or not. And I think that's the beauty in in in, in revolution and in, in the art and love and revolution that we experience. Because again, if we allow them to control the narrative as revolutionaries, they think we just reactionary people that just want to pop off at everything and we disagree with, with anything that's not black and you know whatever and militant and and that's not even the case it's like revolutionaries have a, a profound love for the people because we want the person that not even that we don't know but it's people that we don't like and there are people and because they know because they know two people are like you know there's people that you can think of like okay liberate africa they probably can't stay in my neighborhood but you still want them to be free though, you know, because that's the type of love that revolutionaries carry that regardless of how you feel about somebody subjectively or not, you want to see that black person be self-determining and have the ability to control their own destiny. And and again, I, like, I know I just said a lot, but that's like, that's what I get from this study and being able to understand social systems because we can understand what it is that we fighting for and where it is that we are trying to get, not reforms here, but creating a whole new, uh, structure a whole new social system in which everybody can be self-determining and not just concerned about yourself being able to deal with capitalism alone because we'll never be able we'll never be healthy enough to deal with this thing in our own minds and in, in, in a good way unless you're in the process of getting free oh, oh. Oh. yeah that was that was that was that was right on I, and i appreciate uh you know you summing it up and i think you know uh you know what one thing that one of the many things that you said I, that I really, you know, think we have to, you know, uh, understand is like 
reform versus revolution. There's no, there's nothing redeemable about this system, you know. Uh, and but a revolutionary will use reform to advance the system, you know. But as a reformist, you know, you cannot. There's nothing that you can fix about this system. They still gonna kill African people. That's what they've been doing from the since we met them. You know what I'm saying? Because that helps to perpetuate, you know, uh, capitalism, colonialism itself. Uh, and, and once you understand that structure, you know, you understand that you're not trying to fix this system. And even like when we talk about businesses and land, you know, we're talking about creating dual and contending power. And I know we, we're going to have to spend some time on that too, you know, as opposed to just individual business, but creating dual and contending power to, to make them irrelevant, you know what I'm saying? And to help win people into political life in a way where we understand that we can do this shit ourselves. We can, it's nothing that we can't do as a people. You know what I'm saying? We can solve our own problems, you know, uh, and, and, and we have to be able to, you know, win people back into political life and, and understand that uh, we're gonna be self-determined and we're gonna be self-governing, you know, in our lifetime. I know comrade uh, Saedo been, been having his hand up for a minute. So I wanna uh, get a comrade uh, a moment and, and you know, anybody else, you know, jump in, you know, uh, before we, you know, get to the conclusion of this, of this, of this session. Go ahead, Comrade Sayedo. We're done at nine o'clock, correct? So I'm going to make this brief. Why is it that we got to be ready for everything in a system that does not want us? That's number one. Why do we want to, for an example, be something that we're not even accepted in? Why do we constantly want to, uh, for an example, the Supreme Court justices, all these sisters that are going up for Supreme Court, they're checking everything from the head to the toe. You never see that happen with Kavanaugh. You didn't see that happen with uh, uh, any one of them. Uh, they even allowed Clarence Thomas or rapist uh, to come in, but they let him come in because they had something over him. Uh, why do we think that we own land that they always take? This is a, a gerbil's wheel. I think that uh, Saeed said, that Comrade Saeed said that early on, that it's a gerbil's wheel. And we constantly buy into it. We take the bait because they paint the brush, brush stroke in terms of commercialism, that you can be all you can be. You can do all you can do if you join us this way. And we find out time and again that we have heartbreak. You have people that lose jobs you never can be certified for. You don't qualify in the certification. You got a football coach right now that uh, uh, talks about how Goodell and the rest of them say that he's a, a monkey on the field or they're monkeys on the field. I'd say boycott. Don't even look at the NFL. Don't look at the football. This is the mindset that we have to change. And it's very difficult, but we have to see the superiority that we have. We're very superior. When you walk into a room amongst a thing, a cracker, or whatever. And they, you look them dead in the eye, they have nothing but fear because they know that you're superior. We don't know that we're superior. We believe we have to follow some rules. We have to follow some guidelines that we didn't even create on an empty damn promise. And we do this time and again. I've done it, you've done it, we've all done it. This is the mode that has to be broken, but it is a collective move. I think that African People's Socialist Party has the prescription. I'll say that in Uhuru. Oh, oh, appreciate that, comrade. And and I, I want, you know, just um, you know, say that, you know, our struggle is for power, you know what I'm saying? And 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 that um, you know, regardless of what I think of you or what I what I think of white people, you know what I'm saying? It, it don't even matter, you know what I'm saying? It it really doesn't matter, you know, because the reality is that, you know, like I said, it's just like if you broke in my house, you know, I don't really care what you think about me. Yeah, I, I, I have no, uh, I don't wanna, I, I didn't come to your house, I don't wanna do nothing to you, but the fact that you're in my house, I gotta solve this problem, you know what I'm saying? And so it's not even about my emotions towards you because if I met you somewhere uh, on the corner, we'd probably be okay, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that you're in my house now creates a whole different dynamic that I have to solve in a different way, you know what I'm saying? And then we have to understand that, you know, it ain't about, you know, what they think of us or what we think of them or, you know, what, uh, uh, 
none of that. You know what I'm saying? We have we talking about power. The fact that you got the power to execute what's in your head with no uh, consequences to it. You know what I'm saying? And and you, I, you know, I used to think about like how how is it that you have the power or you can lock me up and give me five life sentences? How do you have the power to do that? You know what I'm saying? And how do you have how do how do who gives you who gives you the authority to stop me? You know, as I'm driving down the street, who gave you that authority? You know what I'm saying? The same person that gave you that authority is the same people that, that gave you uh, the right to come and kidnap me from Africa. You know what I'm saying? The same person that gave you the right to commit mass genocide against the indigenous people. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know, when you talk about those type of things, it's like we, we shit, 500 plus years too late to be talking about, you know, uh, you know, Injustice, you know what I'm saying? You you you've been doing this for 500 years. So you you are the criminal, you are the terrorist. And and we have to be able to uh say that without any any uh apology to it, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't about you know making white people feel comfortable, it's about we want power over our own stuff. And if you and if you got it, you know, we coming for what's ours, whether you give it to us or not. You know, just like the person in my house, you're gonna leave, you know, uh uh one way or the other. We coming for what's ours. It, it, it would be in your best interest to join the APSC and 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 the who movement, you know, and, and give us our stuff back because we coming to get it no matter what you do, you know, and we have to be able to understand that. Um before we wrap up, I want to give anybody an opportunity that hasn't said anything, if y'all want to say anything, or if anybody has any. Uh, last comment before we get into the announcements uh, and, and 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 the call for membership and resources. Uh, Indigo, Mike, uh, Aisha, anybody, uh, Mercer, Jabul, Queen, Mother, anybody, talk mm -hmm. to them. I just oh. wanted to end it with, um, like I like to say this so people can like open their mind to it, but um, you know, colonizers need us. They wouldn't be, um, you know, having the colonialists to even spread their agenda if they didn't need us. So that's how you can see how much power that we have just by the power that we hold. And then also, like I'm open to like, if y'all are open to it, but like to do a Q and A one, like on next, like maybe not the next one, I'm not sure what you have on agenda, but just having a Q and A where we have questions when it comes to the party. Um, and that's it, but who? Oh, 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 appreciate that comrade. Anybody else? Um, as someone who happens to be from the outside looking in, once again, thank you guys for allowing me to go ahead and be here. Um, I hold education like everybody else here. Uh, you're supposed to be accountable for the education that you happen to have rather than being handed it to you. So something that I want to go ahead and share with y'all is um, Black's Law Dictionary Volume 4 is something that y'all should definitely consider extremely high. Please do yourself a favor. Most people aren't aware of how laws happen to go ahead and work, or better yet, how the English language works. Knowing that the English language happens to be a dual-sided sword. There's quantitative <laughs> language and there's denotative language. Us as Black folks, we tend to go ahead and speak people in slang versus where the courts might use denotative language. And that happens to be the language of kings and commerce. You guys were speaking on getting yourself money and gaining some sense of power. In order to have power, you have to have knowledge. Knowledge starts at being able to read first because we all speak English. So if you want to go ahead and do yourself that favor, I think that's something that you might want to go ahead and delve into. And those who have kids, nephews, other family members, please partake in literally learning the, the building blocks of what English happens to go ahead and be, and then understanding that there happens to be a law language that comes alongside with what we're talking about. So example, um, something that a word that we all know happens to be say, understand. That would mean that I happen to comprehend what you're saying, but in accordance oh, to law, true. understand would go ahead and be to stand under one's authority. Mm -hmm. That's the true word and definition. It's little things like that to get you to understand that, like, if we're looking to go ahead and buy property, buy land, basically go ahead and kingdom build, you have to go ahead and understand how treaties are built, because that happens to be the foundation of building any state or any government, whatever. The building blocks start there, so please. I know we know how to speak English, 
but we don't necessarily focus on the reading portions and the understanding of what the English language truly is. So please focus on that a little bit more, if anything else. Oh, it's not. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. English language is a stolen language. They just stole everything. <laughs> they they right. stole everything. <laughs> that they, they, speaking the English language will fuck us up most of the time. But yeah, that's a uh, yeah, but that's right on. You know what I'm saying? I think I think you know, in order to understand, we should always understand, you know, have a clear understanding of the law and 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 those type of things, you know, because you know, uh most times they don't understand the shit. You know what I'm saying? They just they just they just got the power to <laughs> to do whatever the hell they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that's that's what we have to be able to we have to be able to understand, you know, every aspect of it. So I, I you know, and I I like looking at stuff like that, but I think we have to be able to understand, you know, again, we have to have the power to redefine all this stuff, you know what I mean? And and but we also have to have the ability to understand, you know, the things that we're dealing with. The laws that we're dealing with and those type of things as well. Uh, I know we we come to a, a end the time when we uh, we want to. If you're not a member of the African People's Social Party or the Who Movement, we want you to join. If you want to be a part, if you want to join the APSP, um, if you want to uh, be, you know, APSP or Who.org, or you can just say, "Yo, I want to join. I want to know how can I be down." If you don't, if you're not sure, you want more information, you know, get with us. We want you to go to the Burning Spear uh, uh, website. The Burning Spear is the longest lasting revolutionary newspaper in the world. Right here, the Burning Spear. You know, it, it had it had its 50th anniversary two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, so three years ago. So get the Burning Spear. You can go to theburningspear.com, uh, find out more about the movement. Uh, 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 put in the chat if you want more information. If you want to join, again, APSPOHU.org, let us know. And we also, uh, let me give anybody an opportunity. Do you, anybody that's not a member, do you want to join or be a part uh, of the of the party or the movement? If you're not, um, you know, just, just raise your hand. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, somebody scream. <laughs> yeah, so but we also have a goal of raising $100 uh, to help with the work that we do, uh, the political work that we do, um, you know, in, in the party in the Southern region and also uh, building for some of our upcoming events to be able to help transport people from, from here uh, to, to some of the mobilizations. We wanna be able to have, generate resources because uh, freedom ain't free. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and when you're trying to overturn a system, that you in, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, be sending donations to you, you know. Uh, so we want to raise that money. So uh, we're gonna raise a hundred dollars today, and I think we can do it. And if you want to donate, you can donate uh, at uh, APSP. Hold on, APSP South is the cash app, and uh, it's a dollar sign. And what was that? Okay, yeah, APSP uh, South for Cash App. And if you want to donate uh, through, through PayPal, you can go to paypal.me back, backslash APSP uh, Southern. Again, paypal.me backslash APSP uh, uh, or dot, paypal.me backslash APSP Southern. And I'll start off with $25 uh comrade mercy you on if you're talking you're on mute oh can you put the um the paypal and the, um donation information in the chat please yeah oh comrade Sayi, can you put that in the chat for me the paypal again is is, is paypal.me black backslash oh, hold, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on i gotta get into the chat okay paypal dot me dot me Backslash, uh huh, APSP Southern, APSP Southern, Southern, and then the cash app is um, dollar sign APSP South. Yeah, APSP. Yeah, and I start out with with twenty five dollars. 
you know, so we only have seventy five dollars to go. You know what I'm saying? So anybody else that wanna that wanna contribute, that wanna donate, and 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 I always say it's never it's never no amount is too small and no amount <coughs> is too big. And 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 if we say we want to raise a hundred dollars and you got a thousand dollars burning in your pocket, don't 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 be shy. You know what I'm saying? And if you got a dollar and fifty cent that you want to donate, donate the dollar and fifty cent. I always look at Garvey, and it was somebody that had a had a had a uh, they had shares in the Black Star Line that they was donating ten cent. So no amount is too small. So uh, anybody else that want to contribute to to our fundraiser today. I'm gonna donate 15. Oh, what'd you say, Saeed? I got 15, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 15, Saeed, $5, Kundai. Anybody else? I have $10. Comrade Mercer, I appreciate that, comrade. $10. Anybody else? Anybody else? And you? I got you. Uh, I got twenty five on there, Kobe, and I match you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. Lashonda of BPADO. Lashonda. Lashonda. Mm -hmm. Lashonda on Facebook. How much for twenty? She... Okay, Lashonda. Lashonda donated twenty. Comrade Allen got twenty. Comrade Allen. Comrade, you know we we this how we get free. You know what I'm saying. This is how we get free. You know what I'm saying? We, if everybody, everybody ain't got a whole lot, but all, collectively, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we can make it happen. Anybody else? Ten. That's a Hindu. I got five on it. That's what I'm talking about, Riverside. All right, 10. Riverside, uh, five. That's what I'm talking about, comrades. We making we making this happen. And uh, let me let me calculate this real quick. Let's see. All right, comrade. We had 135. You know what I'm saying? That's right on. Y'all y'all see a round of applause. That's that's what I'm talking about. Relentless. You know what I'm saying? We can make this. We can make this work happen. Yeah, that's what I'm I like that dance, Ray. <laughs> I know Indigo can make it a TikTok. <laughs> that's what's up. And I, I just want to give a shout out to everybody and uh, uh, for for participating and and contributing. The people on Facebook, uh, a couple of people came through with donations. Everybody here for participating and contributing, and I, and I really appreciate everybody you know, engaging in the discussion because the more we engage, the more everybody get out of it. You know what I'm saying? The more we struggle with it because I know uh, dealing with these terms, the way that we deal with them in this, in this session is an hour uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of surface, you know what I'm saying? But it kind of gives us a deeper understanding because we can take each social system and dive deeper and that can be a whole course that we can go through. But what we're doing now is, is, is touching the surface to help people understand that we done had the wrong definitions of these things. So I really appreciate everybody participating. I really appreciate everybody contributing uh, uh, to this work, uh, uh, to donating. And comrades, we're going to get free in our lifetime. And we're going to overturn this uh, struggle and get the burning spill. Participate in the APSP plenary tomorrow. Tomorrow it starts. It's the 11th through the 14th at APSP, APSPplenary.org, go and register, participate in the plenary because you're gonna see a lot more of the work and, and all over the world. Uh, you're gonna hear from comrades from right here in the US, from the Caribbean, from uh, Europe, from Africa. When they talk about Africans can't unite, we've been uniting in Africa and African people uh, for over 50 years. We continue the work of Marcus Garvey we continuing uh, to really, um, you know, uh, make this work happen. So comrades, again, I wanna appreciate everybody for participating and we will be here next week, same time, bring somebody with you, you know, let people know, share it, uh, invite other people, you know what I'm saying? And uh, 
you know, we're going to build and study and we're going to, uh, like I say, get free in our lifetime. But let's be relentless and vanguard up, comrades. Uhuru. 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 Oh, Mike, you was quiet, man. What, what, what's up? Yeah, man. No, nah, bro. I, man, this is just very therapeutic for me, man. <laughs> I can just sit back and listen, man. I, I love it because I don't get to uh I don't get to talk this freely, um, you know, about the world problem because it's almost like I'm uh like what I'm doing, it's like I'm almost putting myself inside of the belly of the beast, but at the same time, uh still keeping the African International Foundation. So it's like, yeah, I'm a musician or whatever, whatever, but I'm trying to like, you know, slowly make my way into the big wigs and be like, hey. Uh, this is what I'm actually really trying to do. So, you know, I'm I'm just trying to take it all in, man. That's right on, comrade. That's right on. Right and on, yeah, bro. and this, this comrade about to have a baby, man. Who yeah, knows? soon. You know Very saying? soon. Right on. Bro, I mean, bro. your wife about to have bro, a baby, bro. not you. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, right on, comrade. You put that kind of way. Man, right up. on. And congratulations to y'all, man. Man, hey, appreciate y'all, man. Uhuru. Oh, 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 oh,